All right, hi team. We're gonna talk about uh, how to calculate the activity of lactate dehydrogenase um, given the assays that we did in lab. Um, the first thing to think about is the assay, or rather is the uh, reaction that we're thinking about. So we're using lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH, to convert lactate into pyruvate and also to convert NAD plus into NADH, the reduced form. So that's, that's the enzyme we're assaying today. And we could measure how much lactate is used up, how much pyruvate is produced, but what we're actually going to measure in our lab is how much NADH is produced. And we're gonna do that by measuring the absorbance at 340 nanometers of our reaction solution. And that absorbance should rise over time as NADH uh, is, is made, is produced by LDH. NAD plus has a low absorbance uh, at 340 nanometers. And so when we're measuring 340, we're really going to be specifically measuring the NADH level. Okay, that makes sense. We're going to measure the absorbance that is associated with NADH. And as NADH increases, we're going to see an increase in absorbance level. But there should be a way for us to connect how much absorbance we see with the actual concentration of NADH in our reaction tube. And that relationship, that connection, is Beer's Law, which says the absorbance is equal to epsilon lambda C. And let's talk about some of those values. Um, lambda is the width of the cuvette. And remember, the cuvette is uh, that little cube that we've, rectangle cube, that we filled with liquid and put into our spectrophotometer. And uh, the width of this cuvette is one centimeter. And that's what it is for most cuvettes, not always, but often. We also need epsilon. And epsilon is uh, the absorptivity, absorptivity of the thing we're interested in measuring. So in this case, NADH. This is just an inherent value that's associated with the thing we're measuring. And for NADH, at 340 nanometers, the epsilon is equal to 6,220. And here's the units. So it's like molarity, but upside down and centimeters. So one over molarity times centimeters. Uh, so often, um, since this is always the concentration uh, or the value of absorptivity, often it's reported without these units, but we'll use the units just for completeness sake. All right, next is C. C is the concentration. That's what we want to figure out. So we don't have a value for this. Um, that means we should have a value for absorbance. And actually, the absorbance um, is what you measured on the spectrophotometer. If you'll recall, we have an absorbance at time zero and an absorbance at time uh, equals 60 seconds or one minute. And the difference between these two values is the change in absorbance. And that change in absorbance is going to be associated with how much NADH is being made. Now that we've talked a little bit about Beer's Law here, let's think about how it relates back to what we measured and what we want to calculate, that is lactate dehydrogenase activity. Recall that what we want to figure out is the activity of LDH. And that's going to be in micromoles of NADH, in this case, micromoles produced per minute. That's also called the IU, the international units of activity. 
So in order to figure out how much micromoles of product are produced, we need to figure out how much concentration of NADH increases over the amount of time that we measured. Let's think about some uh, example data here. Um, in my example data, my absorbance at time zero is 0 0.01. And, uh, and remember, this is at 340 nanometers. And the absorbance at time of 60 seconds is 0 0.213 again at 340 nanometers. Um, and then we can calculate the change in absorbance or the delta absorbance that's gonna be 0 0.203. Now this is probably uh, a much larger value than the change in absorbance you actually found uh, in your data, but that doesn't matter. We're just using it as an example. Let's plug this change in absorbance into our Beer's Law formula. So the change in absorbance is 0203 equals epsilon lambda concentration. So we saw on our last page that epsilon is 6,220 6, uh, liters over mole centimeter. And then lambda is one centimeter. And then concentration is going to be in moles per liter. Okay, so we can cross off centimeters. Um, and now we can solve for uh, C, solve for concentration. Let's do that. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 6,220. So concentration equals 3.26 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter. Recall now that our activity is in micromoles per minute. And so we kind of want to get rid of this, this liter value. So let's multiply, let's include the reaction volume of 1.5 milliliters here. So we can say 3.26 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter times 1.5 mils. Then we need to convert between mils and liters. So 1,000 mils, 1 liter. If we calculate that across, we end up with 4.90 times 10 to the minus 8th moles of NADH produced. Terrific. Oh, but if you check our activity values again, we want micromoles and not moles. So we need to do another conversion, and that's easy to do. One mole is equal to 10 to the six micromoles. And then we can cross out here. In micromoles, we have 0 0.0490 micromoles of NADH produced. This means in our 1.5 mil cuvette, uh, where we did our reaction, we produced 0.05 approximately micromoles of NADH. But that still doesn't give us activity because activity is in micromoles per minute. Let's divide by the number of minutes we measured. Oh, well, terrific. That means the activity of our enzyme is 0 0.0490 micromoles per minute, or 0 0.40490 IU. If you used a dilution factor prior to putting your uh, enzyme uh, mix into the cuvette, this is the point where we need to multiply in that dilution factor. So we could say that the activity is equal to 0 0.0490 IU, but we used a 1 to 500 dilution. So now let's multiply this by 500, which gives 24.5 IU. So this is the undiluted um, international units so or the undiluted activity of the enzyme that we used in our experiment. 
fun. Remember here, we're using Beer's law to connect the absorbance that we measured on the spectrophotometer with the actual concentration of NADH that's being produced by the enzyme LDH in our reaction. So the activity of our reaction of, that we're calculating here, um, the enzyme added to this reaction has 24.5 micromoles per minute of activity. We're converting 24.5 micromoles of NAD plus into NADH per minute. All right, let's use this number uh, and convert also the relative activity and the total activity. Let's think about some of the other things we know or that we used in order to do this experiment. Thing the first is that into our cuvette, we added our uh, buffer, but also 50 microliters of our enzyme solution. Okay, that's one thing we know. That 50 microliters of enzyme solution came from a larger uh, container of enzymes uh, extracted from fish, beef, or carrot tissue. Now you have written down what the um, volume of our enzyme uh, solution was in lab. Uh, but in this example, I'm going to tell you that we have 12 mils of liquid, and that liquid contains 5.22 grams, in this case, of the beef tissue. Okay, so that's where our enzyme solution came from. But then you used uh, just 50 microliters of that in each cuvette. So now let's think about calculating the relative activity of LDH and the total activity of LDH. So first of all, recall our activity was measured to be 24.5 IU. That's 24.5 micromoles of NADH per minute. The relative activity is going to consider the activity, um, which we calculated above, per unit of enzyme. And in this case, that's 50 microliters. That is, we used 50 microliters of enzyme to figure out uh, how much NADH was being produced. We used 50 microliters of enzyme solution to catalyze the reaction. So let's do the math here. 24.5 micromoles per minute divided by 50 microliters. And let's convert that into mils. Microliters, we have a thousand microliters in one mil. So cross off, cross off, terrific. We end up with 490 IUs per mil. And remember in IU, the IU includes the per minute um, value. All right, let's think again about what this relative activity means. Uh, in this value up here, this 24.5 uh, IU, that is what we calculated was occurring in our tiny cuvette based on only 50 microliters of enzyme activity. If we were to take a full milliliter of our enzyme solution, we would have 490 IUs of activity. Now let's think about total activity. Total activity is what is present in this entire container over here. If we used all of this enzyme solution to produce NADH, that's the activity that we're calculating with total activity. So total activity is the relative activity times the volume of all of it. So that means we start with 490 IUs per mil. And we know that there are 12 mils of enzyme solution here. 
So the total activity is going to be 490 times 12, or 5,880 IUs in this entire bottle. Lots of times we also think of uh, the total activity per gram. And so we can just do that by dividing by the total number of grams that were used to make the 12 mils of solution. So the total activity per gram is going to be 1,126.4 IUs per gram. So that means if I went back to my original source, in this case of beef, and ground up another 10 grams, I would have this many, I would expect to have 1,126.4 IUs for each gram of tissue that I ground up. So relative activity tells me uh, not just how much enzyme activity was in my little cuvette, but how much is gonna be per mil of my enzyme solution. Total activity tells me how much enzyme activity is in my entire possible stock of enzyme solution. I hope this helps you think about the type of calculations you should be doing to determine the activity of LDH for these experiments. Hooray!